I'm grateful to be here. I'm grateful to be able to speak on this. Um, uh, I um, have been asked to come and tell a story about Wetaskiwin. So maybe this is introducing a no, new sort of concept. Um, we've heard a lot about Wakotuin, um, and it's linked to reconciliation, and Wetaskiwin has a, a, a role to play in this as well. So I don't know if they knew what they're in for because they asked me to tell a story, and I have to tell a whole story. So we're going to be here for a while. Um, that's just kidding. I, I, I am going to tell a brief version of that, so I just want you to know that. I'm also, I want to acknowledge the, the knowledge holders and the legal practitioners from our communities who are in this room, and many of whom are from the communities that hold this story as well. And so I want to say that my knowledge of this is, is, is small, and I understand that, and there's many people in this room who can fill this in and can, can ask that. I'm grateful. I, I, I've heard, we heard Marilyn speak, and we heard Elmer speak. Um, we don't often get this ability to have our, our as students, um, our, our knowledge corrected, because um, when we're in university, we're just writing papers. And so I just want to acknowledge the people in this room. So I'm going to tell the story of Wetaskiwin. And Wetaskiwin is actually where I grew up, and it's just down the road here. So you heard, for people who are not from around here, you've heard about Musquachis. And I grew up in Wetaskiwin, and um, I appreciated what Marilyn was doing and talking about um, the uh, residential schools as well. So I'm non-status, I'm, I'm Cree. Um, and because I'm non-status, uh, my great-grandmother actually attended residential school. And when she turned 16, um, she was married out um, to my great-grandfather. Um, and, and so she lost status there. Um, we're also connected to the Battleford Nation, so there's, there's nations around there as well, um, through my mom's side. Um, but my mom, she married a Swedish-Canadian man and, and, and married out as well, so um, non-status, but we have relations with these communities. We have relations with Samson Cree um, Nation. And so I grew up in Wetaskiwin. Um, what I've learned about the, about the term Wetaskiwin is it's not only a place name, and so you'll see, if you're here, you'll see Hills of Peace, or Peace Hills um, in there, but uh, um, Wetaskiwin is actually a corruption of uh, the Creed word Wetaskiwin, Wetaskiwin Spatanao, um, or uh, Wetaskiwin, it depends on the pronunciation. And what this means is the place where we learn to live on the land together. Um, and so there's a story behind the, the creation of the name. And um, so I'm going to tell a story quickly. Uh, it, occurred, it occurred in a time when there was, there was um, Cree people and, and Blackfoot people were coming upon each other's territory. Um, so there's a lot of legal principles that are written into the place names in Alberta. Um, so there's a place called the Neutral Hills, and there's a story that goes along with that where um, the creator created these hills to create a barrier between Blackfoot and Cree so they can live together on the land there. Um, but on this occasion, they knew that they were coming close to each other, so both nations, they sent scouts out. And what they did is the scouts, because it was the prairies, they went to a hill to be able to see where the other nations were, the other communities were. And what they did is they went upon each other at the same time, these two scouts. And so from the, from, the, from the Nihio side, from the Cree side, the scout, he was actually a young Okama, a young chief, and he was uh, coming up uh, upon her. And so what he wanted to do is he wanted to show a lot of, of pride for his nation and strength. And, and when they came upon each other, and he knew there was going to be a conflict, he said, well, let's fight without, without our weapons. And so they did. They put him down, and they, they, they engaged in this fight. And what they did is they wrestled for hours. They say, this is, this is one account that I know. Um, and they wrestled for hours, and neither the Blackfoot person or the Cree person could over, overcome each other. And they continued to wrestle. And the wrestling, I can't, I can't imagine wrestling for um, hours. Uh, I have a lot of brothers. Uh, we wrestled, it was about 10 minutes, and we're tired out. Uh, so this is, this is a long match. And what they did is they took a break. And so when they took a break, um, it was, uh, I've heard a few different accounts, but it was, it's always the same at this part. It was, uh, the Blackfoot person pulled out his, he had, a, he had a pipe, his personal pipe, and he's having tobacco as, as a break. And the Cree person, he had broken it in the, in, the, in, the, in the tussle, in the fight, and so he didn't. And so they're sitting there, and the, the Blackfoot person offered him his pipe because he, he had made relations with him through this fight. And, and the Cree person took it, and he smoked it and gave it back. And then they had an acknowledgement there. So they acknowledged what they do is they'd shared something. They'd shared something that was common with both their community's practices and their, both their legal practices within their nations. They shared tobacco. So tobacco is a very sacred um, thing for, for my family. Um, and they acknowledged that and they wondered about it. And so they actually talked about it with each other. And what they decided to do is they would go back to each nation and they'd go back and deliberate with their nations and find out um, what was the meaning of this. And so um, the young chief, the young Okima, he went back and he talked to the, to the old ones, so the people you see in this room who, who represent us. And he asked about this. He sought, they sought interpretation of, the, of what occurred. 
And they said, yeah, I think, I think you did. I think this was a, a treaty relationship that you started. And so what happened was the, the Cree community went back to that hill and the Blackfoot community went back to that hill as well and, and they negotiated a treaty um, there on that hill. And so that's where they talk about Wetaskiwin being the place where we learn to live on the land together. And so I think about this, uh, Wakotawin, we've heard a lot about how Harold Cardinal describes Wakotawin as, as how we govern our relationships. And uh, Matthew had a, a quote from uh, Willie Littlechild here. And Willie Littlechild, in, in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, Commission, had talked a lot about um, the word for reconciliation within his, his, his knowledge um, is Wetaskiwin. So learning to, to live on the land together is also a reconciliatory concept. Um, so I'm going to leave you with that. Um, this, you know, I don't want to get too far into my interpretation of the story. Um, but I do want to think about, I always think about one thing with this. I think about what it was for the nations when they're coming back to this hill and to let go of what was in their hands, right? And to come with open hands with each other. Um, and I also think about what it took um, for them to have that common knowledge of what it meant to share tobacco, to share something sacred. And then I think about our relationships with Canada and our treaty relationships. And I think about what was missing when um, our, our relatives, when they had ceremonies that, that told them what they could do with the treaty when they're entering into it. And what was missing on the other side, what was Canada coming or not getting with these relationships as well. So this story does give me a lot of hope. Um, it gives a lot of direction for me in terms of like legal practice and how we can address these. Okay, I thank you for listening to me briefly here. Um, yeah, exit. Okay.